Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you my new studio. I recently bought a new house which is very exciting but even more exciting it means that I get to have a studio that's entirely my own and I get to decorate it how I want and paint it because it's it belongs to me. I can do what I want with it. And uh, yeah, before this I lived in a two bedroom apartment and both my husband and I work from our own home. So, so we had to have our office and our studio kind of squished together and now it's just my own to decorate and organize how I how I wish so I can't wait to show you guys what I've done with it I do have some exciting news I do have a witch print that I am sending out to my citrine tier over on patreon that's the package tier where they get a little special art package sent to them every month and they're getting a print of this witch print in 11 by 14 sent to them at the end of May so anyone who does want this print make sure to sign up for that by the end of May and you'll be able to get this in the mail for yourselves. I also have a video of me painting her over on my Patreon for all of my dollar and up members over there. So so yeah, if you'd like more content, especially more painting content, then there is a link down in the description that will take you over to my Patreon. But, but yeah, let's just jump right in with the studio tour. But the first thing that I was so excited to do was to paint the walls. I went with this really dark, almost black color. I I've been thinking about this for a while now. I I wanted something that would have a lot of contrast between the artwork that I'm working on as I'm working on it so I can hold it up and and see what it actually looks like rather than having things that would affect how I'm looking at it, like if I had a color on the wall. I also just really like dark colored walls. I feel like it just, it feels so cozy and comfortable to be in a space like this. It does for me at least. So this was a dream come true. I just... I feel much more at peace in here. And it also means that chords and things like the main shape of the of my lights, it just blends in with the wall and everything feels much less cluttered and everything's just grouped together by value. So it looks much more streamlined, which is a lot easier to be in a space like this for a long time. I also decided to leave the space right behind my main art table completely blank for now. I think I might put some mirrors up higher at, towards the ceiling of that wall section, but I, I love how clutter free it looks. And when I want to take a picture of the artwork as I'm working on it, I can just push it right up against the wall and there's just nothing to distract from the photo. I can add things in like little, little crystals or stones or anything else that I might want that would enhance the picture, but there's nothing that I have to clear out of the way. And I have a lot of little decorative things. I, I love collecting stuff like this. I have a ton of rocks and crystals that I've just found and, and have and things that I found at antique shops. I just, I love collecting things. They make me feel at home and I love looking at them and being inspired by them. But I wanted this space to be very orderly where everything had a place for it to live. And in my last studio, I had a lot of this stuff just right on top of my active workspaces, which was really cluttering and visually distracting. And now it can just have a place where everything can live and I can change how it, it settles, but it can stay there and I don't have to push it out of the way to get to my artwork. And I just have a few places around the room where, where I have places for that. I have that first little shallow set of shelves where all the little tiny things go and then a larger shelf for anything bigger. And then a little spot in my closet where it has kind of a, a medley of a lot of those things together. And I knew that I wanted to have a couple of shelves that were dedicated to to moving around artwork as I was working on it and ones that were still my favorite and I wanted to be inspired by it. Right now that top shelf is just originals that I still have that I really like. And then the second shelf is where I put all of the artwork that I am currently working on or have just finished. And I think this will get switched up a lot as I'm working on things. I have maybe more pieces in active painting phases. I can, I can change both to to a display where I can put all of my paintings or the other way around but but I love being able to have a spot where everything that I'm working on can live and I can look at it and continue thinking about it and this is how I have my lights hanging I just have hooks right in the ceiling that they they hang on and I love how most of the box just disappears into the color of my wall 
And that's my camera that I use. And this is the tripod that I usually use when I'm doing watercolor since I can point it either directly down or at an angle so that you can see what's happening underneath my hand. And then I also have a traditional tripod that I use when I'm painting on oils or painting with oils. That way I can get it right at a horizontal angle. And that's my cat Hazel. I love her. She's very scared of everything though. So she's running away from, from me filming her. And now time to show you my computer desk. I used to have a desk that was the same size as my art desk, which is actually a dining room table, which is a great way to get a ton of surface area for basically the same price as a normal desk, which is a great little trick, but I felt like I had too much space in my room dedicated to my computer desk and I want to spend less time glued to my computer. I want to have more of an incentive to get up and move around. So I actually downsized it to a much smaller desk. And that way I, I still have everything that I need on my desk. But when it comes time to planning or working on sketches or looking at references, I can get up and move over to my my art table, which I like a lot more. And that little corner was just where I have my calendar and also my cork board where I have my quarterly goals that I'm working on and ones that I've actually achieved. And we can jump into my, my closet, my giant closet, which I love. I actually decided just to take the doors off of that so that everything is still really accessible. But on the top shelf, I have my oils and my watercolor brushes, and I have those separated into a larger tin that has most of the brushes and then a smaller container that keeps the, the ones that I'm actively using. And then the next shelf has my light box and sketchbooks and notebooks that are mostly blank. And then I have a bunch of other mediums that I rarely use, but on occasion pull out. And uh, then on the other side, I have my other set of shelves. And on that set of shelves, I keep my candles and my oil paints, oil mediums, any anything that I need for for gluing down the watercolor paper to my my wood panels. I also keep my wood panels over there and in between the two I keep my watercolor paper and my cutting mat. And in that little cart I like to keep things that I am constantly reaching for like my utility knife and pencils, my pens, my anything that I use in my bullet journal and also my watercolor palette we can just kind of race through what's in these shelves. There's actually not that much, but in this top shelf, I just have general knickknacks, papers, notes I want to keep. Second, I have some gouache, some metallic paints in it. And this drawer, I have lots of scrap pieces of watercolor paper, pieces that were left over from larger pieces. So I like to use those for my, um, for my color comps and for testing out colors. This just has some micron pens in those pouches and pin back buttons, some watercolor palettes that I have besides my, my big studio one. And this is where I have my Pantone color book, also a set of pencils and some other general art things. And then the bottom drawer is where I keep all of my, all of my pens and tape and anything random like that, that I, I use, but I don't really have a spot elsewhere for it and a cat bed for Hazel, and of course, some more decorative things on top of my set of drawers because I cannot get enough. And that is about it for today. I do have the original painting that I talked about, that witch painting, that is available at my shop. So if you'd like to own that original, there is a link down in the description that'll take you to my art shop. And of course I do have that link to my Patreon where you can watch the video of me painting that witch. And also you can check out if you'd like to sign up for the Citrine tier so you can get the 11 by 14 print sent to you. And uh, of course, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are, are amazing. You help me to be able to make these videos and make more artwork. So thank you so much for all of your support. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. I will be back next week with some more art video content. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you then. Bye.